Hey everyone, welcome to this week's car video. It is a very exciting video because I'm back in my very favourite car, the Porsche 911. And in honour of that, I'm going to give you guys a treat. To start this video off, the first few moments are going to be just of driving the car and me not speaking. I know, I know, <laughs> that's the way all my videos should be, but yes. We're just going to drive the car and then we're going to talk about it after I've done the driving. So let's get on with the driving. Park rag off. <laughs> okay, off we go. No, oh, silence, Nick, silence. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> My videos from now on should be just me driving the car and not speaking, but too bad. You guys are stuck with me, I'm afraid. So yes, today's video is the Porsche 911 991. It's a 2015, it's a brand new car. It's got 900 miles on the clock, so I can't bash it around too much. I've got to treat it with some respect. And of course, this is Peter's car. Peter, uh, if you remember, was uh, in my video a few weeks ago, the NSX video. Uh, he is a lucky man that he owns several of my favorite cars, and so he's been very kind uh, to lend me his brand new Carrera S. And uh, for those of you that haven't followed my, my channel for a long time, I used to own this very model car, um, uh, which I had a lot of problems with, unfortunately, but I still love these 911 so much that I plan to get another one. Uh, but I'm waiting for the 991.2 to be released. So yeah, what are we gonna do in this video today? Uh, we'll do a little bit more driving and talking about the how this car drives. This car's got a few options, um, which, uh, pretty rare. This has got the um, PDCC, which I had in my car, which is the Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control. Uh, this has got a manual gearbox, which uh, is of particular interest to me because I'd like to get a manual gearbox for my next car, uh, and a few other nice little options. Uh, this, this car, of course, is also the Carrera S. This is pretty much the base model, apart from the Carrera, uh, and I want to talk about uh, what a special model the Carrera S is and how it is actually my favorite model within the range still. You know, there's 25 different 911s as of the filming of this video. Uh, and they're all a variation on a theme and they're all faster or they're all better on a track or they all sound different, you know, uh, convertibles and the Targa Top and the Black Edition and the, the GT3. Uh, and, and everyone's got their favorite. Uh, but for me, and I'll talk about this more later in the video, you know, the, the Carrera and the Carrera S with the originals and everything after that is an improvement in some ways, but taking away from the overall experience in other ways. 
Uh, so for me at least, I find the Carrera S to be the purest of these models and just a, a you know, the, the most fun car uh, for overall enjoyment of enjoying a 911. Uh, we'll also take a look around the inside and talk a little bit about the changes um, that have happened between the launch of this car in 2012 and now, very few of those, and maybe uh, touch on uh, my plans for a 911 sometime in the future. But otherwise we're just going to enjoy driving a 911 and I hope to impart what is so very special about these cars to you guys. So let's get back to some driving and uh, then we'll stop and uh, take a look around the inside, the outside and talk a bit about, more about the details of this car. Okay, so where do we start with the driving? I think we'll start by talking about the transmissions. And this car has got the manual transmission, as you can see, uh, which is pretty rare these days in a 911. You know, a, lo a lot of the 911 models don't even come with the option of the manual. It's only the lower down models, the, uh, the S's and the 4S's and so forth that have the, even the option for the manual transmission. And as a whole, most people don't even go for it. It is still pretty rare. Uh, which is a shame because it's such a beautiful, lovely, fun transmission to have. It really, really is. Um, that said, you know, I had the PDK transmission in my 911 uh, and the PDK is wonderful. There are many advantages to having the PDK. Obviously, the PDK is much faster than the, um, than the manual. Uh, slices almost half a second off the, um, off the 0 to 100 time or 0 to 60 time. Uh, the other big advantage of the PDK is that it makes the car far more fuel efficient even though the claimed fuel efficiency between the manual and the automatic is it's meant to be much the same. The real life experience of people that have the manual is that they tend to leave the car in lower gears and get far less fuel efficiency out of it. So most of the, most of the manual drivers will see uh, uh, maybe not even break the 20 miles to the gallon on average, whereas uh, when I had my car with a PDK, I would often see high high 20s, no problem at all. Uh, the other the other thing is that the PDK does make the car feel a little faster, a little more powerful. Uh, obviously, that's just a that's just my feeling, you know, just the way it bangs through the gears, it really gives it a little bit more of a push. But other than that, uh, you know. Uh, if I'm buying another 911, I'm going to try and get the manual. Uh, it's just, you know, it just makes this car come alive. Having, having a manual transmission and having that extra driver involvement, uh, I love it. I love, I love driving a manual and as much as I appreciate the, the PDK and obviously appreciate it enough that I got the dual clutch on my M4 as well, uh, there's just something missing about the experience of driving a sports car unless you have a manual transmission. So, uh, and this one is a particularly good one. Uh, it's a short throw, the clutch is nice and light, and of course, if you're cheating like I am right now because I'm talking and not concentrating, I've got it in Sport Plus mode, and so if I change down, the car's rev matching for me. And, uh, and you sound like a hero. Uh, of course, it's easy enough to rev, rev match in this car. Uh, it's a very predictable engine. If I turn the Sport Plus off, uh, chop it into fourth, and then it's easy enough to get through the gears without that rev matching. It's such a light, predictable gear, gear shift. It is a seven speed, uh, which is unique in manual gearboxes, I believe. There's no other seven speeds around. or well, maybe there is now, but as far as I'm aware, there isn't. Uh, so there's a lot of rowing involved, but uh, it's not a problem. You know, you, uh, what am I in the fourth at the moment? So I've got three more gears to go and I'm already doing 50 miles an hour. Uh, but yeah, that seventh gear is extremely high. If I go up to fifth, sixth, seventh, <laughs> it's barely idling at 50 miles an hour. Uh, so yeah, it's, you, you really, if you want to get the fuel efficiency of that seventh gear, you've got to get into the habit of getting all the way up there. Um, which I think is a little bit of a learning curve for people that have driven five or six speed cars to remember that there's yet another gear up there. But other than that, yeah, the, uh, the gearbox is a honey. It is a sweetheart. It is just a joy, a joy. So yeah, if, you're, uh, if you have the option ever to drive a 911 with a manual gearbox, do so. It, it just enhances the experience uh, in such a way that uh, it feels like a completely different car. It really does. So 
So, aside from the transmission, what else is special about this car? Well, this is the Carrera 2S. Uh, what does that mean? It means it's the two-wheel drive and it's the S model. The S model gives you the more powerful 3.8 litre engine uh, and the two-wheel drive means that it's rear-wheel drive only. Uh, and that is something special about this car as well. You know, not to take anything away from the four-wheel drive models because they are excellent in their own way. The four-wheel drive models, uh, well, they're faster. There's, there's no question. Uh, a Carrera 4S is definitely faster than a Carrera 2S. Uh, it's faster because it's faster off the mark and it just gives you a little more confidence into the corners. I mean, they stick to the road like glue. That said, however, it takes something away uh, from the driving experience. I always come away from driving a four-wheel drive 911 feeling a little short-changed. Uh, and maybe that's harsh of me to say, but it's just something so wonderful about having a rear-wheel drive 911 just allowing you to do a little bit of power steer, a little bit of, uh, it takes you a little bit to the edge and certainly allows you, if you're in the right situation, to drift the car a little bit. You know, I was lucky enough to be able to drive back to back a Carrera 2S and a 4S on the track last year. And well, I definitely got faster lap times with the 4S I came away from driving the 2S with a bigger smile on my face. And really that's, what's, that's what it's all about with these cars. You know, some people might buy them because they're faster than other cars, but really you're buying these cars to get the maximum amount of fun out of them. And for my money, the maximum amount of fun is the real wheel drive models because I can just be a little bit more of a, a, a lunatic in these cars and have a little bit more fun and control the car with the throttle is just the pinnacle of driver involvement for me. So yeah, I, I think it's special to find a rear wheel drive model of this car. As for the engine, well, uh, I think most people would agree that the standard Carrera, uh, which is the obviously the cheapest, the entry level Carrera, is enough power, but the Carrera S just gives you uh, that extra boost and where where it's important is the is the torque um, It might be sacrilege for me to say this, but to me it, it feels a little bit like some of those those older VTEC Honda engines where uh, It wasn't until you got up to a certain rev point that suddenly it hit you in the back and that's very That's very much the way I would describe hang on, Let me not kill these cyclists uh, Very much how I would describe this engine as well and that it's got plenty of power but it's got a surprising boost of torque once you get up to about 4,000 RPM. Uh, I'll get up onto a straight and I'll demonstrate to you, but unless you're in the car, you really can't appreciate it, but it's such a glorious engine because it sounds so great and it responds so well, but also because it's got such a lovely power curve to it. So I come up this straight here, and just as I hit that 4,000, suddenly, oh, away it goes. And it just builds power and builds power and builds torque. Um, and I think uh, this is something that's quite different with the, with the turbocharged engines where you get all that torque down low. This car is just building power as you go through the red ra rev range. And you're really hitting the top torque as you're getting close to the 7,000 RPM rev, rev limit. And that makes driving this car such glorious fun. But of course, you've got the sound as well. The sound. I really hope they don't ruin the sound with the next generation of engines which are likely to be turbocharged because having that engine behind you and making that sound is such a big part of the enjoyment of driving this car. So yeah, the, the two wheel drive makes this car fun, the, the engine is just such a big part of the overall experience and obviously getting this car up and running and of course the manual transmission in this particular one is also adding to the fun so as far as I'm concerned <laughs> this is just one simply incredible vehicle and I love every second of driving it uh, without question my favorite car at the moment uh, and I look forward very much to hopefully getting another one myself and for those of you that are wondering how much do I enjoy driving the uh, the Carrera more than the, 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 my M4. Unfortunately, as amazing as the M4 is, and it really is an incredible car, it really is an incredible car, there can be no doubt that driving a Carrera 2S is simply 
so much more fun. Uh, it's just so much lighter, smaller, more responsive. And I don't know, obviously I'm a bit of a, a Porsche guy. And so, uh, you know, as much as I love my M4, I enjoy driving the, the 911 just so much more. It's just, it's just so, so, so much more of a sports car. Okay, so let's stop here and take a look around the inside and then we'll take a look around the outside. Uh, this car has got a two-tone interior. Um, Porsche offers, I think, three, four two-tone interiors that offers the red one, two greys and this uh, Luxor beige. And these two-tone interiors are kind of a bargain Porsche-wise, that is, you get a lot of the deviated stitching uh, and uh, the, the change in the uh, carpet colour uh, all for a pretty reasonable price. If you did it all um, as, uh, um, as options, it would cost you a lot more. But yet, I don't see many 911s with this two-tone interior options. Most of them come in black still. Most people pick black um, or, or one colour throughout. And I think th these two tones are pretty cool. Um, I particularly, my personal favourite is the, is the grey colours, either the, the light grey or the darker grey, um, because they come with the, the nice... Um, white deviator stitching and it just looks very very sharp um, anyway so yeah I, I always appreciate when I see the two-tone interiors not that the black is bad that I had black in my car and the black wears very well looks very sharp it's just everyone's got the black so it's always nice to see something a little different if we take a look around the inside of this car uh, it's pretty it's pretty standard uh, 911 interior very nice switch gear, uh, everything is the highest quality, the leather is very nice, everything looks so great. Uh, Peter's got the uh, sports steering wheel in this car. The sports steering wheel is definitely the better looking steering wheel, it's better than the multifunction steering wheel, but of course it doesn't have the buttons on it, so uh, you have to get the multifunction to get the nice buttons and the buttons work so well in these cars. So we're, yeah, we're all looking forward to the day when they finally allow the uh, McCann steering wheel in these 911s because then you get the nice sporty looking steering wheel and you get the buttons. Um, I've, I've suspected that they would release that any day. I, I'm sure it will be part of the uh, the 2016, sorry, the 2016 uh, model year release so it could be any time that we see the McCann wheel in these cars which would be great. Otherwise the gauge cluster is the five gauges that you see in the uh, Cayenne, the, the uh, Panamera and of course the 911. Uh, a lot of the gauges can be duplicated on this multifunction display here. The multifunction display has the neat G-forces, the, um, uh, the multifunction stuff that's programmable, you can put whatever you like in there. Um, the radio, the telephone, the navigation, the navigation again, trip computer, uh, tire pressure monitor, uh, sport chrono stopwatch uh, lap timer thingy um, and the gear shift assist which is only if you get a manual transmission car uh, and the g-forces uh, of course if you have a four-wheel drive car you get the four-wheel drive uh, display there as well uh, moving across this is the the um, the, the Porsche um, media system which is starting to look a little dated uh, it works well enough uh, it's pretty fast, but uh, once again, I think for the 991.2, we're going to see an update on this. We're going to see a bigger screen. Uh, we're going to see the uh, the Apple system. So I think we're going to see a big improvement for the uh, for the PCM when uh, when Porsche updates the 911 to the 991.2. Otherwise, uh, everything is uh, pretty pretty much standard 911 in here. Uh, really nice, uh, high quality buttons nice layout. This car doesn't have the sports exhaust so there'd normally be another button here for Porsche, uh, for the sports exhaust but this car does interestingly have the um, the, the PDCC Porsche Dynamic uh, chassis control uh, which is now printed on here for the 2014 onwards they would print PDCC if you're paying all that money for it that's what that's the telltale that you're getting it and of course it's got a sunroof so it gets the, the middle buttons here. Um, over here you've got the, the cup holders which pop out, which pop out, there we go. And you can close that up again and your cup holders there, another one on this side. Like so. And 
your, your uh, standard 14 way sports seats as well. Uh, uh, my thoughts on the sports seats versus the 18 ways. Personally, I prefer the 18 ways. I, uh, however, I think the 14 ways look better and a lot of people find the 18 ways a little uncomfortable. They've got bo uh, bolsters up the top here and it's just right for my height, but I find a lot of people that are broader shoulders than me, I'm kind of a weedy looking guy. Uh, people with broader shoulders than me they sometimes find them uncomfortable. So the safe seat to go for is certainly the 14 way. Uh, the 14 way is nice in that, I'll show you something here. The 14 way is nice in that it's uh, covered in leather all the way to the back, whereas the 18 way has a, has a plastic, a grey plastic shell on the back. Um, so yeah, this, the 14 way is certainly the nicer looking seat, but the 18 way gives you bigger bolsters here and the bolsters up here as well. I might even uh, jump into the back seat if I can. I'm going to put the seat all the way forward here. I'll try and jump in the back and I'll show you that it is really not possible for someone my size to spend too much time in the back but William can move across but through trial and error myself I've found that people that are people that are f uh, five foot four or less can fit in here but someone who's six foot like myself my head hits the roof and of course I can barely get my legs in here yeah I'm a <laughs> This is not an ideal seating position. I wouldn't like to drive all the way to Florida sitting like this. But William, on the other hand, who is quite a short gorilla, bit of a seat in your face there, buddy, isn't it? But otherwise, you don't mind being in the back seat. This is certainly a perfect seat for my dog, Tui. She, she likes being in the back of a 911. But yeah, the back seat, useful for small dogs and gorillas and emergencies, but not for fat, lanky, full-size gentleman like myself. Otherwise, the only other thing I'd say about the interior is what has changed in the three, four years of the production run of the 911. Well, not much really. Um, it's really been options more than anything. 2013, we saw that the glass sunroof became available. 2014, what did we get? Oh, we got the backing camera uh, and different color combinations are coming in and out. So over time they've added more options more than changed anything. This car looks exactly the same inside as a 2012 911 would look. Okay, on to the outside my friends, let's go. I'm not going to pretend that I don't just absolutely love the shape of 911s and in particular the 991 and in particular the, uh, the original Carrera and Carrera S. You know, the RS cars and the turbo cars and the Targa cars and all the other millions of variants that they've now introduced, they're all special in their own way. But in a way, they seem, to me at least, to detract from the beauty that is the original shape, this original 911 Carrera or Carrera S shape. You know, every new model adds something to it, but the original is so perfect that I just, you know, there's something to be said about having this original shape. And that's why I like the Carrera S so much. It's just, I don't know, uh, it, it, they got it right first time and all the other bits and pieces they add to it, well, they're fine. They, they just detract a little bit from the, what I consider to be perfect first time. Uh, this particular car, obviously, Carrera S, not a 4S. So it's not a wide body back, but you still get um, the nice flared arches. You still get that, those big hips on the back. Uh, four tailpipes of the S of course and we'll have a quick look at the, the frunk, pop the frunk, here we go. Um, it's good stuff Gorilla storage here but today we've got my camera gear um, but you can still see how deep it is down there, nice and deep, uh, plenty of room for stuff but yeah you know that's the joy of the 911 is there's room in the front but of course you've got the back seats as well. The back seats are where you tend to throw your groceries and your, uh, your other bits and pieces and, uh, and your small people as well. And your little dogs, they all go in the back and of course the back seats fold down and there's plenty of room. And of course if you're an idiot like me, you might even put roof racks completely ruining the beautiful lines of the 911 on your 911 as well. This particular 911 has the, the glass sunroof. Uh, I'll open that up for you in a minute, but otherwise, you know, it's pretty standard on the outside. Peter's put the, the European style 
um, uh, indicators on the side here which vastly improve the look. The, the amber indicators really just look out of place if you ask me. Uh, he's got the, the coloured Porsche, Porsche um, emblem on the side which I think is like $200. But otherwise it's all standard on the outside and standard is good, it's beautiful. Just a beautiful car. Okay, so here's how the sunroof functions. You know, the, the real benefit of the sunroof is not to have a sunroof because uh, when I had my one, I never actually used a sunroof. Uh, the real benefit of this glass sunroof is letting in more light and making the interior feel larger. You know, a 911 is still a very small sports car and so anything you can do to give it a, a more roomy feel, I think you should do and certainly the sunroof does that, well the glass sunroof at least. But here's how it works. Um, you've got a, a blind here that can be moved backwards and forwards. So electric blind and then you can press this middle button to raise the back for a vent or you can lift this button here to open it and all two stages open it goes. Sorry, push it, not lift it. And there you have it. Uh, the sunroof is open, it's got a little wind deflector. Um, you know, it looks kind of odd, I think. The sunroof looks odd open. Uh, maybe other people would disagree with me, but uh, I preferred to have it closed at all times because it just looks like it's going to fly off. But it's perfectly secure. And then lift to close. But yeah, in my mind, the glass sunroof, the real benefit, of course, is giving the car a more airy feel inside. Okay, so finally to wrap up my thoughts on the 2015 Carrera S. You know, obviously, I'm a big fan of the 911. Uh, there's not much I dislike about them, despite the problems I had with my one. I mean, the problems I had with my one were pretty legendary, but, you know, that's not the experience that... Anyone else seems to have had with the 911. Everyone else I know that has a 911 is very, very happy with the build quality. And you know, I just had an unlucky car that had a few problems, and then they snowboard into more problems. And you know, I I really don't hold a grudge against uh, Porsche because of that. And a lot of people say, "Oh, you're crazy, Nick. Why would you go back there to Porsche after all the problems you had?" And I'm, nah, you know, these things happen. And it's a car that I still love, and it's a car that I hope that I get another one of. And, you know, driving this one today just reaffirms uh, how much I love the 911, love driving it, love the whole 911 experience, love looking at it, love everything about it. They're just a magnificent car. They're not for everyone, I realize, um, but for my personal taste, I, I just think it's a, it's a really great package. Um, and, you know, it's a package that is always evolving. They've spent 50 years uh, trying to perfect this, uh, this car with the, rear, with the engine hanging out the rear. And, you know, this latest generation really is just a step forward again. And, and they've just done such a great job. And, of course, they're about to bring out the 991.2, which is going to be the next generation. And probably the biggest change, well, no one really knows what's going to be in the 991.2 package. Probably it's going to be that all the engines will now be turbocharged. There'll be smaller engines with turbochargers, which doesn't mean it's going to be an enormous increase in horsepower. Uh, quite the contrary. Normally they just bump the horsepower just a little bit, so this car will probably go from a 400 odd horsepower to maybe 415 or 420. But it'll get a decent bump in torque. Turbocharging always bumps the torque, so we'll probably see an extra 100 foot pounds of torque, which will be nice. You know, this car, this engine is just wonderful the way it is, but you can always have more torque, so um, I look forward to seeing what they do. And and like any like any change in the 911, there'll be people on the forums going, "Ah, this is the end of the world. The, the, no one will want to buy the 911 anymore. It's terrible." Um, very ugly looking bug <laughs> just flew in. I'll just get rid of that. Um, you know, every time they change the 911, there's all these naysayers that say, oh, you know, the last generation is the last of the good ones. But, you know, sure, turbocharging has its disadvantages. I, I hope that the engine's still going to sound great. I, you know, it's like it's like the, with my uh, M4, you know, when they switched from the V8 to the turbocharged 6, everyone was, ah, oh, it's the end of the world. But, you know, the M4 is a great car, and turbocharging is part of what makes it great, I think. Uh, Porsche have, will take their time to make the turbocharged engines of the next generation Carrera uh, to sound great or as close as they can to the, to the naturally aspirated. Uh, but you get the benefits of turbocharging, more torque, better fuel efficiency, 
yada 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 so um yeah i look forward to seeing what they do of course i look forward to whatever other changes they make i'm you know we're pretty sure we're going to see the new multimedia we're going to see new steering wheels maybe a few other little bits and pieces but generally i think it's just going to be those engines that change hopefully some more color options as well really like to see some more colors what do you think william so yeah looking forward to the the 991.2 um but it doesn't take anything away from what a near perfect 911 uh the current generation is it really um, it always blows my mind when i drive one of these cars and as i've said throughout this video uh it's wonderful as every car in the 911 range is and each car is special in their own way um for me the original carrera s uh, is one of the most special if not the most special to me because it's it's 911 a modern 911 in its purest form which um uh, uh, you know, and it allows you to have a manual gearbox, allows you to have rear wheel drive. It's, it's, it's a wonderful driving experience. And so finally, I'd like to thank Peter for letting me drive his car today. Just, just a wonderful car and, you know, appreciate that Peter's let me drive his NSX as well. And I'm sure we'll see more of Peter in my videos. We, we really get along very well and uh, we, share, we share common taste in cars. And, um, and I'd also like to remind everybody about the Cars and Choppers Day that's coming up on 1st of August. Uh, if you're in the New England area or you're willing to drive to the New England area, uh, it's going to be all the BMWs and Porsches and a lot of cars that I've had on my, uh, on my YouTube videos there. Um, and a lot of people driving with their fancy cars uh, from around the country. And of course, it's going to be helicopters. You can see a helicopter up to close. You can even take a ride in a helicopter. Um, so from 10 to 4, 1st of August, Yalesville Heliport, it's, it's going to be a fun day, I think. So if you can make it to that, I, I'd appreciate you coming along. I'll do my best to make it an entertaining day. So yeah, from, uh, from William and I, thanks again for watching my videos. Please, uh, please like my video if you enjoy it. It helps me a lot to, to build, my, build my channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, everyone. See you soon. Bye then. For those of you interested in the production of my videos, uh, e each video I do, I try and add something new to it or change something ever so slightly just always trying to improve my videos in this video uh, two new things in this video first one is a pretty simple one all of my GoPros now have a sunshade on them um, a lot of a lot of time because you're driving in a car and this, the direction of the sun changes so much and it being summer there being a lot of sun um, always getting um, sun flares in the in the lenses and so these little sun visors ah go away mosquito um, Certainly I'm hoping will help that and we'll see less flare and less contrast issues with the GoPros because of these little sunshades. Uh, but the other big thing is I've always had trouble with my chase cams uh, never being steady enough. I've always had a, you know, a, uh, a, a suction cup or three suction cups trying to hold a chase cam on my car. Uh, this time I'm using this new setup which is a little bit more elaborate and the big difference is that I now have um, a fastener on the hot shoe on the top of my camera so the so the, the camera is stuck to the car plus also fastened by three ways and so the camera becomes incredibly steady and um, and, and the results of that it certainly uh, should show through in this video where the chase cam is a little higher quality than than previously and I hope to use the same setup uh, by putting it in different parts of the car uh, in future videos even internal shots might uh, benefit from having such a stable um, a stable SLR or my uh, my C100 can be mounted this way as well so improving the stability of the mounts is uh, is where I'm trying to head with some of these uh, some of these new gadgets to improve my videos <laughs> Toyota Corolla's in the way all right, wait for that car to go. No, get out of there, William. Forget it. You're not driving home. You're a terrible driver.